I am Rodrigo Duterte, I am a Filipino. I love the Philippines because it is the land of my birth. It is the home of my people. Bukas daw ang Pilipinas na mamagitan si U.S. President Donald Trump sa isyo ng agawan sa teritoryo sa West Philippine Sea. Para sa update, umaaksyon si Dale De Vera. Dale? Which is pinangunaan ni Foreign Affairs Secretary Alan Peter Caetano ang isa sa mga event ng ASEAN and the Foreign Ministerial Meeting kanina. Dito ay kinuwento niya na bukas daw ang Pilipinas na maging mediator si U.S. President Donald Trump para sa isyo sa South China Sea. Naminiwala si Caetano na paraan ito ng pagpapakita ni Trump na pinapahalagahan niya ang kapayapaan at stability sa region. Pero kailangan muna raw itong tupaan sa consultation sa pagkita ng mga ASEAN country. Sa kabila nito, nagpapasalamat naman si Caetano sa itinaabot ang natulong ni Trump. Samantala, kasalukuyan namang nagpupuno ang mga foreign ministers ng Pilipinas, Indonesia at Malaysia para sa seguridad sa celebrity. Matatanda ang ilang beses na rin nagkaroon ng pagpupuno ng tatlong bansa para labanan ng terorismo, human trafficking at pamimirata sa mga dagat. Reuters? Maraming salamat, Dale De Vera. Nudsunod nang nagdaratingan ang mga delegado ng ASEAN Summit. Kaugnay niyan, magbabalita live si Shaila Francisco mula Clark, Pampanga. Shaila? Roy, sa nasa Sham na ASEAN leaders na ang lumapag dito sa Clark International Airport simula kahapon. Pinakahuli nga dyan si Thai Prime Minister Prayut Chan Ocha. Dumating na rin si Japan Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. Dito sa Naiya at sinalubong siya ni DOTR Secretary Arthur Tugade. Bandang alas dos naman ng hapon, kanina na dumating si Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Nagkagulo pa ang mga kabataan na nagpo-perform matapos silang lapita ng Prime Minister. Una nang lumapag sa Clark International Airport kanina si Lao Prime Minister Tong Nun Sisulit. Ganon din si Indonesian President Joko Widodo. Dumating na rin kanina si Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak, si Singaporean Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong at New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinto Ardern. Lahat ng leaders sinalubong ng opisyal ng lokal na gobyerno ng Pampanga at ilang cabinet secretaries. Isang libo at apat na ang bata rin mula Pampanga at Bulacan ang walang tigil na sumasayaw bilang pagsalubong sa mga leader. Si Maralas just imedya ng umaga. At dahil nga sa tindi ng init, may mga batang nahilo at pinagpahinga muna sa likod. Royces de derecho na sa Maynila ang ilang ASEAN leaders na lumapag dito sa Cork para umatend ang ilang ASEAN events doon tulad na lang ng ASEAN Business and Investment Summit. Mamaya ay inaasahan naman natin ang pagdating ng mga leaders ng Australia at Vietnam. Royces, maraming salamat, Shaila Francisco. Samantala, nagkaroon ng tensyon ng mga pulis at mga rallyista na nagpumilit lumapit sa U.S. Embassy para sa update o maaksyon si Jenny Dawn. Jenny? Royces, Royces, nauwi nga sa Tulacan, si Paan, at uh, nagkaroon pa ng water cannon. Water cannon pa, nitong panig ng mga otoridad, ang mga rallyista na nagpumilit na makapasok o makalapit doon sa U.S. Embassy. Dahil sa CM Calo pa lamang, ay nakaharang na yung strong force ng CNC. Kaya ang ginawa kanina ng mga rallyista ay lumiko sila dito sa bahagi ng UN Avenue para sana marusutan yung PNC pero, pero hindi nangyari yon dahil pinapos sila ng mga pulis doon na nga nagkaroon ng Tulacan dahil naging matusok na kasi init ng panahon ngayon ang uinit ng ulo ng mga ralista na gusto makalapit nga doon sa US Embassy. Pero ang may pit na binin sa mga PNP o sa pulis, bawal silang makalapit doon. Kaya ang ginawa nila, kahit tinutulak nila, yung mga pulis ay laging nga uh, hindi, hindi na tinag yung uh, force o lang yung line ng PNP. Kaya ang ginawa na lamang ng uh, Bureau of Protection dahil na kanilang standby, yung kanilang truck dito ay uh, yung master cannon yung uh, mga ralista dahil doon mas lalong naging agresibo yung mga ralista kaya yung kanya mga pinuno pinasiusapan na yung mga kasamahan nila na maging mahinahon kaya sa mga oras na ito ay nagtungo sila dito sa kabaan ng Padre Paura ito sila nagsasagawa ng uh, maiksing programa pero ayon sa kanila hindi dito natatapos ang kanilang programa dahil hanggat nandito si US President Donald Trump ay kakalampagin nila pipili sila makapasok doon sa US Embassy dahil gusto nila iparating mismo ang kanilang pagsusot papunta nga dito ng presidente ng U.S. na sinasabing imperialista at ginagawa uh, lamang suta ang Pilipinas. Joyce. Police. Our Joyce Ilas is at the Liwasang Bonifacio in Manila where the militant groups are assembling. Joyce, uh, what is the group's plan? 
members of leftist groups say that they will assert their right to peacefully assemble and their right to address grievances today. They are opposing the presence of U.S. President Donald Trump in the country and the ASEAN summit, which they believe would only lead to much deeper poverty in the country and in other ASEAN countries. Now, uh, as early as 7 a.m., we saw members of militant groups practicing their defense in case of a possible clash with the police. They practiced how they would interlock their arms and defend their line as they try to push the police that would block their way. They argue that what the police did yesterday when they were dispersed using water cannon is not maximum tolerance but a forceful intent to disperse them. Now the, pro the militants are planning to hold their protest in front of the PICC where different heads of state and government officials are gathered for the 50th ASEAN summit. But this is going to be difficult considering the tight security in place for the event. But the militants are saying that they will exert maximum effort to get as close to the PICC as possible. Now, Anak Pawis representative Ariel Casillo said that they expect at least 15,000 to 20,000 of their members to join their protest today. Claire? Joyce, can you tell us more about the effigy there of U.S. President Donald Trump? effigy of uh, U.S. President uh, Donald Trump has uh, four arms positioned in a swastika or Nazi-like position. Now, each hand is holding uh, something. One hand is uh, holding a uh, crane, which symbolizes the allegedly U.S. Uh, plundering of resources of uh, different countries. Another hand is holding a gun, which they say represents the uh, warmongering of the United States. Now, two hands are holding a bag of money and another hand is holding uh, a missile each. This, they say, represents the fascism and the militarism of the United States. Now, behind Trump is a small version of President Rodrigo Duterte, which they say symbolizes uh, how Duterte is, they believe, a supporter and the backup of uh, President Trump. Claire. All right. Joyce Ilas there reporting from Liwasang, Bueno. Claire, the International Media Center here in Pasay City is now very busy and full of local and foreign journalists covering the international event. Now, it's going to be a full day for those involved in the summit and related meetings. But first, the official kickoff for the 31st ASEAN Summit. The opening ceremony is happening at 9 this morning at the Cultural Center of the Philippines. President Duterte, as chairman of this year's ASEAN Summit, summit is expected to deliver opening remarks. Now, the ASEAN summit plenary will follow immediately after the opening ceremony. From there, more meetings in smaller groups. This time, as I mentioned earlier, it's going to be a full day for those involved in uh, the meetings uh, with uh, scheduled meetings from noon to about dinner time. The ASEAN leaders will begin with a leader's interface with the ASEAN Business Advisory Council that will be followed by the ASEAN-US Summit. This will commemorate 40 years of ASEAN-US dialogue relations. ASEAN will then hold separate summits or meetings with China, Korea, and Japan. There will be another leaders interface at 6 p.m., this time with the East Asia Business Council. And finally, the ASEAN-UN Summit at 8 p.m. Tensions in North Korea, territorial disputes in the South China Sea, and the rising threat of extremism in the region are among the key topics during the meetings. Claire? AC, you mentioned that the ASEAN-China summit is happening today. Can you tell us more about this and what we can expect from it? Well, the ASEAN leaders and uh, China are expected to discuss the current state and future direction of their dialogue partnership. And in doing that, they are supposed to touch on the sea disputes. But what's more crucial uh, this year is that they are expected to announce the start of the negotiations on the code of conduct in the South China Sea. This following the uh, adoption of the framework of the COC by ASEAN foreign ministers last August. So this is going to be one of the major developments that will We'll be monitoring or we'll be watching out for today. Claire? All right, AC Nichols there reporting from the International Media Center at the World Trade Center in Pasay City. The president made it clear 
Cooperation is the only way forward, so it's better to open our doors to everybody. This is especially true in our relations with China, the country's top trading partner, who also happens to be the giant that claims the entire South China Sea, including islands within the Philippines' exclusive economic zone. There is no room for confrontation. This was the president's message before the business community during the 2017 ASEAN Business and Investment Summit. Today, China is the, is the number one economic powerhouse. And we have to be friends. There's a, the other hotheads would like us to confront China and the rest of the world for so many issues. The South China Sea is better left untouched. The country's total exports to China was pegged at over 327 billion pesos, or over 6 billion U.S. dollars, and imports at over 799 billion pesos, or 15 billion U.S. dollars in 2016. The business summit is designed to strengthen the ASEAN economic community. ASEAN Business Advisory Council Chairman Joey Concepcion emphasizes the need for big business to mentor entrepreneurs from MSMEs or micro, small and medium enterprises. The ASEAN Mentorship for Entrepreneurs Network aims to scale up of these thriving businesses which account for up to 99% of the Philippine economy, says Concepcion. At the same event, Myanmar State Councilor Ong San Suu Kyi noted the importance of integration and connectivity with our neighbors. She shared thoughts on women empowerment and the development of human capital in Myanmar, which she said contributed to the tremendous growth of the ASEAN economy. We can say that in my country, women are going ahead of the men. Already in Rangoon University, 60% of the students are girls. So it shows that they're doing better in the education sector. So I often have to ask this, this question, where have all the men gone? The ASEAN Business and Investment Summit will run until Tuesday. It will feature forums on ASEAN infrastructure programs and will have special sessions with the region's top business tycoons, including our very own. Cecil Erdizabal, CNN Philippines. The Philippines is boosting defense ties with Russia. During the bilateral meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin, President Rodrigo Duterte thanked Russia for the weapons and military equipment it donated. He says the Philippines will buy arms from Russia. This after the purchase of firearms from the United States did not push through. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque added the two countries will also sign deals on education, transportation and energy. A viral Foreign Affairs Secretary Alan Peter Cayetano says the Philippines is open to the idea of U.S. President Donald Trump mediating between claimant countries to the South China Sea. Speaking in Vietnam before heading to Manila earlier today, Trump said he was prepared to mediate in the territorial disputes. Cayetano said he believes it was a genuine offer from the U.S. President. Cayetano recognizes this would have to be discussed by ASEAN members, but he believes everyone welcomes the offer. Right now, Cayetano says ASEAN remains focused on getting the code of conduct done. The Foreign Affairs Secretary explains the work may seem endless considering the issues are so complex. So what President Duterte wanted to do as ASEAN chair this year was to calm things down and get everyone talking. Cayetano admits it's not a perfect situation and there are still a lot of things to talk about, but he believes we're in a better position compared to previous years. AC Nichols, CNN Philippines.